so I think that you know you should always think uh, before you take a stand that it's going to be controversial, uh, but that you should usually, uh, if you believe it, take the controversial stand. I say usually because there's always these instances where you know you have multiple um, interests or views that you want to try to achieve ground on, and there's always that kind of um, analysis that goes on in your head. You know, uh, if I do it here, is this the right forum? So. You know, to give an example, um, I got to go to the president's uh, summit on malaria at the White House. And so, um, you know, I have disagreements on a number of policy issues, but I believe very strongly in his initiative, which is giving um, essentially a 20-fold increase um, in funding on malaria. Now, um, you know, I have this disagreement, but when I'm there, you know, making a scene or anything like that uh, is a bad idea because it undermines the current issue that uh, you know he's talking about, which is malaria. Mm -hmm. And so there's always you know some level of you know kind of thinking through those things. But I think it's always key to be who you are, uh, stand up for the principles, and I think ultimately um, those are the times when you make a difference. I mean, just joining something because a million people have already done it, you know, you're helping to add a voice, uh, but that's not the type of change that you look back and tell your kids, you know, I was the hundred uh, thousand and one person that decided to join this incredibly important movement that these, you know, other uh, people spent 20 years working on in their basements trying hard to uh, build up. And you know, if you think about the great change makers, uh, they all have those stories. Um, so I think it's incredibly valuable. And putting yourself out there, I think, is an experience that really um, builds leadership and character. And I think that um, my own experience has been that it's been very valuable. Um, and you know, sometimes you look back and you're really proud. Um, so I was uh, personally um, involved in the protests against the Iraq War. And I mean, that's not hugely controversial, right? Um, but uh, I was kind of a leader in uh, of Americans Abroad when I was in the UK and we all went to London and we did this huge, um, you know, uh, 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 signs and we had a lot of, of resentment. And people called us anti-American and unpatriotic and um, we went forward and we laid out our case for why we didn't think that it was in our country's best interest. And, you know, frankly, um, Looking at uh, what's happened, uh, I think that you know there's a lot of reasons to be proud, and I think I would be um, very ashamed uh, for having supported the war I didn't believe in um, had I lost that that sense of courage. And you know what you do at a specific moment, uh, you um, get the brunt of for you know a couple years, um, but you uh, live with the legacy of your action uh, for the rest of your life. Uh, so, you know, I'll have always remembered, uh, you know, being a part of, I think, the, the right side of that argument and standing up for it. Um, whereas, I mean, it was a pretty short moment that I was called, you know, unpatriotic. So I think it's always difficult. Um, and I think what Columbia University, um, you know, uh, did um, is very important. Um, and I, I regret that it ended up just being, I think, theater, because yeah. um, I don't think it was very helpful overall to the discussion. Um, I think that was on both sides um, of, of the way that it was handled. Uh, but I do think figuring out how we engage with Iran, which is another subject, is very important uh, so that we avoid uh, essentially another mistake. Thank you. Yeah. We're just about out of time. I want to leave half an hour for people actually you know, uh, okay. talk to you. Um, but uh, I think we should have one more question. Sir, you mentioned the importance of having mentors. Yeah. There's one uh, history professor here at Lehman College. His uh -huh. name is Juan Louis Renike. He's absolutely a terrific uh, guy. Oh, I strongly good. urge everyone here to try to attend his lectures. It's uh, fabulous. I mean, he opens up and he uh, creates the whole concept of of uh, empires and what are markets and everything. It's just a, a eye-opening thing. I strongly urge everybody who can to take that course. Juan Luis Renico on the uh, history department. Great, thank you. And I have one more question. Okay. Um, obviously,
be patriotic <laughs> to, to even understand what was needed uh, for this country? How, how did you even come to that understanding yourself? Yeah, so uh, my personal story, um, and I think this relates, is that uh, I was born with something called a cleft in the palate, uh, which is a fissure between the um, lower nose and upper lip. And uh, I had a pretty serious case. And when you grow up with that, there's a lot of concerns about self-esteem uh, because you look different for a while. And until I was like 14 or 15, I talked very nasally. And so, you know, you can get made fun of all those things. So my parents, um, I think, just went way overboard in trying to give me confidence. And they really read all these books and they became totally obsessed with making sure. So when I was young, they used to, this is all intentional, they used to have a video camera. They'd follow me around and they'd ask me to speak on it. And they'd always act as if what I said made sense, even when it didn't. And I really think there's a lot there um, in those kind of like uh, formative years. And so a lot of the things that they did, um, you know, which they went out of their way for uh, because they were worried, um, I definitely think that I'll try to pass on. I think uh, probably I'll try to uh, not do quite as much as they did because uh, I, I want a more normal uh, set of children. Um, but I think that had a lot to do with it. And then, you know, putting yourself out there is a very satisfying experience. Once you've done it and you've gotten burned, you get very used to it. Um, and so, you know, I've run uh, when I was in college for a lot of student government uh, or other elections and, you know, won some and lost some. And once you lose, uh, losing again isn't that bad. Um, I can't quite describe um, how that happens. But just psychologically, you realize that, like, it's part of what it means to be in a race. And so I think that most people, you know, don't put themselves out there. Or if they do, they just do it once. And I think, you know, uh, just pushing yourself to do it again and again is a really valuable way to build up courage. Would you say the same thing about being accused of being unpatriotic? Yeah, I would. You could go out there and <laughs> seek another opportunity to be accused of being unpatriotic. And I, I think, I think it, it kind of strengthened me in a certain sense. Um, I come from um, a... Uh, I, I'm Jewish, and uh, we work a lot as an organization on um, Jewish-Muslim relations, and that's not always popular in all circles. Um, and I think it strengthened me in feeling more set in my conviction that we need to um, be open and um, take people for uh, who they are rather than um, make assumptions. Uh, and I think all of that has kind of been built up over this sense that, you know, Right now, I'm being called uh, this, but I remember when I was called that, and you know, it turned out to be uh, very misguided. Okay, I don't think Pastor Star wants to. I'm sorry, I don't think Pastor Star wants to wrap up, but I have a major question that I think is pretty relevant to all of us. Um, so you said with your study abroad program that a lot of students were involved in, that they came back and they started their own, I guess, like little versions of. Right, democracy on their campuses here. Um, how would someone go about setting up like an aid, I guess, Contact. program, yeah, charter yeah. Like, <laughs> at their campus? Is that possible? I think it is. Yeah, it's absolutely possible. Well, first, um, all of our resources and things like that are totally available to existing clubs. So the political science uh, network would be maybe a great home uh, for the activities. Um, there's no need, uh, for example, to have like the actual name Um, and if you really wanted to set up a club, then there's a specific kind of like chapter toolkit, and it comes with like a constitution and all the kind of things that you need, as you probably know, to set up a club. And so that kind of walks you through it. But if there's a group already existing, our kind of uh, mindset is that it makes more sense to kind of use time to put on events and kind of have impact rather than kind of go through all of the bureaucratic steps of setting up a group. So, uh, but definitely check it out. It's at AI Democracy. So I think the biggest thing is to be inspired. And I really think that it's contagious. And I think the reason it's contagious is that people see someone who's inspired and happy and um, 
really uh, seems to be better off because they've connected. And I think a lot of other people look and they say, you know, I'd like to have that same satisfaction. And so I really think the greatest thing is to be inspired, you know, talk up what you're passionate about, show how much you enjoy making a difference. And then, you know, there are specific things that you can do, like, you know, invite them to campaigns, try to emphasize um, how it connects to their lives. But the truth is, if someone's not in the right mental framework to care, um, you can't get them there just by saying this is in your interest, because they're always going to kind of see you with a bit